Now I give the floor to Ms. Diana, I hope I pronounce Feire, from National Agency for Scientific and Technological Culture from Portugal. You have the floor, please. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you very much to this fantastic panel here and to the organization for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. So, International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Uh, myself, I used to be a scientist a few years ago. I did my PhD in biochemistry, and I perfectly remember back at that time the first International Day of Women and Girls in Science. And I remember looking around with my colleagues and starting to think, why do we need this day? Because I, I was working in a biological sciences. For me, my colleagues, most of them were women. <coughs> and then I realized this, this reality is not the same in many different scientific areas. And the challenge, um, one of the challenges definitely to make sure that the percentage of women is equal in different scientific areas. And uh, although it was a trend in the area where I was working, it was not a trend in many other scientific areas. Another challenge that I, that I noticed uh, and I started to feel was the, the stereotypes that scientists uh, face, especially female scientists, regarding gender, regarding appearance, uh, but although I believe these stereotypes are starting to be kind of broken and Miss USA from this year is an example of that as well. So we are slowly um, giving small steps toward a successful future regarding how, human, how women are, are seen in the scientific community. Uh, later on, after my PhD, I decided to move to a more science communica communication, science outreach, uh, work, and this is why I work at the Ciencia Viva agency in Portugal. And at Ciencia Viva, we try to, to work on exactly how can we empower women, how can we empower girls. And one exercise that we like to do, because we, we, we work with teachers, we work with schools, and we work with little kids, and uh, we always organize uh, once a week a meeting with the scientists. So primary kids, kids from primary school uh, meet a scientist, either a woman or a man. But it's very interesting because we always give them a challenge in the beginning. We always ask them, please draw a scientist. And they don't know whether it's a man or a woman, but they would always draw a man. And always looking a bit like Einstein, I have to say. So <laughs> chemists looking, explosions looking at, like Einstein. So this is something we need to focus. We need to inspire the young generations about the fact that scientists can be a woman, can be a man, looking as a normal person, and not crazy looking as most of the kids uh, would think of. And then they always meet the scientist and make a drawing of after meeting the scientist, and they can draw the real person, the real scientist, not always with a lab coat, and they, they leave that room, they, they finish that day with the impression of what a scientist looks like, and the fact that they can also be a scientist in the future. So we inspire them that they can also become a scientist in the future. But this is one exercise. But the other exercise is, of course, if we need to inspire the younger generations, we need to empower scientists. We need to empower female scientists to inspire the young generations. So we need to work on both, on both sides. And this is why at the agency, a bit... Uh, aligned with the speech of Mrs. Ola here. We also created this book, and this I think it's a perfect example that can be re um, replicated in other places, about women in science, and basically with the collage of photographs of many different scientists, and from different generations. So not only the, the most advanced uh, careers, um, female scientists, but also the younger generations, for example, has postdocs that already are uh, awarded with certain, certain um, awards. So we tend to, we, we wanted, and this was done in 2016 and the last edition in 2019, we want to show the society and uh, not only the scientific community, but also to society who they are, what they do, and what inspired them to become scientists because this is uh, very important for them to, to also be empowered to continue inspiring the younger generations. And Portugal, I have to say, it's a, a great example because we are in the top five of um, girls doing uh, STEM courses in university studying. And this is, this is great. And from all the, the scientific <coughs> researchers in Portugal, 45% are female. 
And this is, this is really, really amazing. And of course, we want to continue working to have 50% or above, but I think the question and the challenge here is to replicate this in other countries. So this is just an example, and again, the, the motto today that I wanted to share with you is that we need to inspire the young generations, but for that, we need to empower female scientists to do that as well. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention, and thank you very much.